All right, so after pulling the same net, throw a little tidal pond back here and up our tidal creek right this way, we pulled up a couple different species of fish and other uh, invertebrates as well, some crustaceans. Inside this jar that I'm holding, this little container, you can see there's a couple juvenile blue crabs. Those are these ones right here. These ones are already able to swim on their own. They've grown those paddle-like back legs, which are known as the swimmerettes. And we did a Facebook Live not too long ago for you to check out all about the crustaceans that you can find around here. The crabs in that video were much bigger. These ones are small, they're not very blue, because here in the salt marsh, this is an excellent nursery habitat. This is where the juveniles grow up. The little ones you see rocketing all over the place, those are called grass shrimp. Um, they're very small, they're very clear to help them hide and blend in here in the marsh, and they're not going to get a ton bigger than this. So it's not anything you're going to see in a restaurant or in the grocery store. Little, little shrimp swimming around. One of them, and I'm going to try to highlight, but she is moving around a whole lot, we do have a mother, mother little grass shrimp. She's got her eggs all tucked up under her. So we would say that she is gravid. She is carrying her eggs or her row around with her. She's got to make sure she keeps fanning all of her little swimming legs to keep water circulating over those eggs, keep them oxygenated, which here in the intertidal habitat, uh, the marsh exists between low tide and high tide. Depending on what time of day it is, getting enough oxygen could be a challenge. We also have a hermit crab. Yellow stripes on the legs helps me identify this as a striped hermit crab, tucks itself up into its shell. Now, fun fact, this crab did not make that shell. The shell was created by a gastropod um, or a snail called a moon snail. That's who makes this rounded kind of shell. The snail built the shell, the snail died, the crab found it and moved in and uses it as its home to protect its soft, squishy belly or its abdomen. You can see one more animal using this shell as its home. On top, this is another type of crustacean. These are all barnacles. You can also see barnacles growing on this, which is not something that we want to find in our marsh, trash or marine debris. You can see a lot of different barnacles on here, a lot of plants, um, potentially some more animals growing on it or inside of it. And so these animals are using this trash as a home. That doesn't mean you should let more trash get into the water to make homes for animals. They'd prefer their natural homes, rocks, sticks, pieces of logs drifting through the marsh. We've pulled up a number of them back here in this tidal pond. Um, but they will use this as well. So here we have a cluster of salt marsh periwinkle snails. Uh, snails are gastropod mollusks, so they build this shell around their soft body to protect them. Um, these are pretty active right now. They're sliding around on my hand using their muscular foot. You can see uh, their little tentacles coming out with the eyes down at the base and sliding around on that nice slime trail that they're leaving behind that also has a little feces. These snails, like I was saying before, um, they climb up the grasses in the marsh to escape the water to try to get away from the blue crabs that like to eat them. So sometimes you'll see jagged little scars on their shells and that's from where the blue crabs have tried to eat the snails. And if the attempt isn't successful, if it doesn't kill the snail, the snail is actually able to regrow their shell. So they're uh, climbing around, feeling, and I'm actually feeling a little bit of vibration. And that is them uh, using their radula, their t rasping tongue-like structure, uh, to look for food on my hand. So I can actually feel that uh, gentle kind of scraping. So they're great at exfoliating. 